this lecture we will see how to plan a trajectory for a robot manipulator. So, path planning and trajectory planning are very important aspects of a robot manipulator when it is performing a uh, work like pick and place or spot welding, painting or various other tracking problems. So, uh, let us see first what is the meaning of a trajectory or the difference between a path and trajectory. So, a path is a simple curve in the space where there is no association of the point on the curve and the time. In other words, uh, it is simply a relation between the coordinates of the point. So, for example, if I write uh, y is equal to x square in the two dimensional space. So, then it represent a path only. There is no uh, association of each and every point and the time, but the same curve if we can give x is equal to t and y is equal to t square where t is time. Then it says that uh, uh, the point at time t equal to 0, the point is at 0, 0 and when t is equal to 1, it is at 1 comma 1 etcetera. So, uh, each and every point on the path is associated with a time. So, a trajectory is a path to which the time is associated and without association of time when it when a uh, curve is given then it is called a path here. So, in, in robotics the trajectory planning is a very important aspect. So, the end effector in this picture it is shown that at 3 different uh, time t 1, t 2, t 3 uh, the orientation of the end effector should be as shown here as well as the position is shown as in the picture. So, so, the trajectory planning is of two types for a robot manipulator that is joint space trajectory as well as the Cartesian space trajectory. So, uh, the meaning of this is if we have a robot manipulator and if you are interested in moving the manipulator to different configuration like this. So, at t equal to t 0 here it is at t 1 at t 2 at t 3 different uh, instant of time the robot is having this configuration. So, here we are mainly concerned about the end effector uh, position and orientation at a different instant of time. So, that is called the Cartesian trajectory. It should travel along a path associated with this time uh, and the specification is about the end effector only here. So, uh, end effector with respect to the base of the manipulator as we have seen it is 0 T n is the arm matrix and it is a 4 by 4 matrix. And it is a function of uh, q 1, q 2, q n uh, where q 1, q 2, q n are the joint uh, variables. So, the end effector with respect to the base is given by the arm matrix as shown here. So, this uh, configuration is given for various instant of time then it is called the Cartesian Cartesian trajectory and for performing this Cartesian trajectory if, if you are giving the angles that is q 1, q 2, q n the variables the joint variables are given as functions of time then it is called the joint space trajectory. So, uh, one can plan to move a robot manipulator either using the end effector trajectory or uh, using the joint space trajectory. 
but one uh, one if one is given another is can be obtained by the inverse kinematic solution if the end effector trajectory is given if the arm matrix is given uh, we know that uh, we can solve the inverse kinematic and obtain the values of q1 q2 qn so if the cartesian trajectory is given we can obtain the joint space trajectory by solving the inverse kinematics similarly if the joint trajectory is given directly by substituting in the kinematics equation we can get the end effect trajectory so both of them are related concepts so here for example uh, for the two arm manipulator x y axis we have a manipulator like this and the actuators at this joints the angle is measured at the x axis theta 1 and this is theta 2 the end effector position is x y so x is given as l 1 cos theta 1 plus l 2 cos theta 1 plus theta 2 where l 1 is the link length and l 2 is the second link length so this is a very uh, simple geometrical uh, concept we can easily obtain the so from here we can solve theta 1 and theta 2 by uh, using simple algebraic uh, manipulations and this a and b are given by this expression as a equal to l1 plus l2 cos theta 2 and b is l2 sin theta 2 and by substituting we will get the values of this thing so given <coughs> the equation for x and y we can obtain the inverse kinematic solution theta 1 and theta 2 in this manner. So, now if we plan a trajectory if x of t y of t is given as a function of time then uh, we call it as the Cartesian trajectory that is uh, if you want that the end effector should travel along a straight line should travel along some straight line this manner then the equation of the straight line can be given as a function of time at each and every instant what should be the position of the end effector so that can be calculated so for each and every uh, end effector position we can solve the inverse kinematic so, if uh, the end effector position is given as a function of time that is the Cartesian trajectory and if you solve the inverse kinematic and obtain theta 1 and theta 2 that is the joint trajectory for uh, this thing the two arm robot manipulator. So, in general uh, for the n arm manipulator if the 0 T n is given as function of time it is called the Cartesian trajectory and the angles are given as function of time it is called the joint trajectory. <coughs> now the trajectory planning is of two types point to point motion as shown here. So at different instant of time the positions are given that is point to point motion we are not concerned about the intermediate position that can be uh, calculated by using some simple formulae uh, because we are not specific about the intermediate uh, position of the end effector uh, only aim is to reach these three specific points at th this three instant of time which can be planned so that is point to point motion like uh, uh, for example the loading and unloading work or the spot welding type of things can be done using the point to point motion because uh, taking an object and putting it only two positions and orientations are important and the initial and final time are important intermediate uh, positions one can uh, calculate by uh, various types of form but continuous path motion is uh, we are not only interested in the initial and final but all the intermediate positions are also important they are also to be planned 
in a suitable manner. So for, for example, the spray painting, welding, continuous welding uh, of me metals etc. So, they need a continuous travel of the end effector of a robot manipulator. So, <coughs> in both the cases we can follow uh, the procedure of uh, finding the trajectory using polynomials. So, generally uh, initial position and final positions are given or more conditions may be given. So, if we know the at the 0 initial time t equal to 0 and the final time t f. So, the position 0 theta of 0 and theta of t f is known and the velocity at initial time and final time the derivative theta dot is known. Then we can find the intermediate values of theta of t for various values of t. So, how to find that can be easily fit yeah, because there are four conditions given uh, theta 0, theta t f and derivatives at the two points. So, we can consider a polynomial of degree 3 and then by substituting the values we can obtain the coefficients a 0, a 1, a 2, a 3. So, it is a very standard way of fitting a polynomial for given constraints. So, if there are n conditions given like this, then we can fit a polynomial of degree n minus 1. So, that there are n minus n coefficients and which can be obtained uniquely by solving. So, we can easily see that uh, if theta of t is this one, it is derivative theta dot of t is given by this directly differentiating and then substituting t equal to 0 we will get uh, theta of 0 is a 0 and the derivative if you put t equal to 0 we get a 1, a 1 is theta dot of 0. So, this two are directly obtained. Now, by substituting the final time t f in this expression T f in this expression we get uh, already we have obtained a 0 and a 1. So, a 2 and a 3 are obtained by this uh, simple procedure by solving the two equations. So, uh, by this procedure we are able to get given the initial and final condition and initial and final velocity we can fit a curve theta of t for all the intermediate uh, positions. So, this procedure can be adopted uh, for any number of uh, such conditions. Now, if we consider the second derivative of the theta the, this polynomial, first derivative is this further if you differentiate we will get 2 a 2 plus 6 a 2 t this expression. And now, if you substitute a 2 and a 3 value, we get this uh, uh, acceleration. The second derivative is called the acceleration is given by this expression. Now, we can observe that when we put t equal to 0, this acceleration is constant, some, some value is obtained. So, it is a little bit of disadvantage when, when a robot is moving at t equal to 0, the acceleration is some non-zero value. It means there will be a, a sudden discontinuity in the acceleration at the initial time. So, here uh, for a smooth motion of a robot manipulator, if there is a discontinuity at the in the acceleration, uh, it is not desirable. So, here we see that uh, we cannot specify the acceleration on our own. Uh, because uh, automatically it takes some value at t equal to 0. So, to avoid that we can increase the number of polynomial, the degree of polynomial. So, if we have initial position, velocity and acceleration is specified and similarly final position, velocity and acceleration is specified. So, there are 6 uh, conditions 
using six condition uh, we can fit a polynomial of degree 5 like this and then using those six condition we can find the constants a0, a1 up to a5 in a very simple manner directly substituting we get a system of equation and the coefficients can be obtained like this a0, a1, a2 up to a5 is obtained by the inverse of this matrix multiplied by the known values. This is the it is given that initial position, initial velocity, initial acceleration. This is final position, final velocity, final acceleration. So, if this six values are given, uh, we can substitute and then multiply by the inverse of this matrix, we obtain the coefficient directly like this. So, it gives the uh, fitting of a polynomial if uh, some constraints are given for any type of problem. So, this can be applied for the robot manipulator problem like this. So, let us consider a, the SCARA manipulator, the standard manipulator of this form. Let us take uh, this is O, A and B. And here there is a revolute joint, and this is prismatic joint. So, the first joint is a revolute one, and the second is also revolute, the third one is a prismatic moving. Uh, above and below and the fourth one is a revolute joint. So, we call it as theta 1, this rotation theta 2 and this is theta 4 and O A B C D E F. So, if we take O A to be 10 this length and A B is 5 here and B C is 3, C E it is a variable this one from because it is going up and down the C E is a variable and E F is 4, E F the value is 4 here. So, the using the d h algorithm and then fixing all the uh, coordinate frames and then writing the parameters of the manipulator, we can easily calculate the arm matrix 0 t 4 to be like this. The relation between the base frame x 0 y 0 z 0 and the end effector frame here is is that 4 y 4 x 4. So, the relation between the end effector frame with respect to the base frame is given by the arm matrix like this for the given parameters. Now, if you want that the robot should travel between two points that is uh, two instant of time if you are giving at t 0 the time t equal to 0 t of 0 is given by this expression and this is 10 t at time instant 10 is given by the homogeneous transformation as given here. So, it means the x coordinate of the end effector is parallel to the vector 1 by root 2 1 by root 2 0. In this uh, the x coordinate of the end effector with respect to base, in base we can say 1 by root 2 1 by root 2 is uh, the line with 45 degrees between x and y axis. 
the y coordinate is 1 by root 2 minus 1 by root 2 0, the z is 0 0 minus 1. So, if we observe that the z axis of the end effector is opposite to the z axis of the base. So, it is 0 0 minus 1. So, as so as given here. Similarly, at time t equal to 10 units, the x axis will be 0 1 0 of the end effector. 0 1 0 is the y axis here for the base. So, the x axis of the end effector will be parallel to the y axis of the base at t equal to 10. So, it should turn uh, so much of angle so that it adjusts itself from time t equal to 0 to this one. And the origin of the end effector is 0 3 0 sorry 3 4 2 at time t equal to 0 and it is 0 5 1 at time t equal to 10. So, uh, it, it is uh, shifting the origin should be shifting to the values as given here in the fourth column of the this thing. So, for performing this uh, position and orientation between this two time instant 0 and 10. Similarly, the velocity of the end effector is 0 at t equal to 0 and it should stop at the t equal to 10. So, what we have is we have four conditions at two instant of time. So, we can simply fit a third degree polynomial with four coefficients. So, we will write that the end effector 0 t 4 as a function of time should follow this polynomial trajectory. Uh, at t equal to 0, it is uh, the a 0 can be calculated directly to be t of 0. So, a 0 is the matrix given by t of 0 as given here. And when we differentiate it, we will get a 1 is nothing but d by d t at 0 that is equal to 0 here. So, a 1 is the 0 matrix. Similarly, we can find when we substitute at t equal to 10, small t equal to 10 in this expression, we get this value that is equal to as given by this one 0, 1, 0, etcetera. So, we get a t of 10 as given here and the derivative is 0. Now, when we solve this two equation, we will get the values of a 0, a 1, a 2, a 3, etcetera. So, once we obtain all these four coefficient matrices by substituting, we get the entire trajectory. So, the the trajectory planning is performed in this particular manner for the given uh, SCARA robot manipulator. So, the procedure is same for any type of manipulator once the initial final conditions are given whether it they are two conditions we will fit a polynomial of degree 1 and if there are uh, n conditions we will fit a polynomial of degree n minus 1 and find a trajectory. So, that uh, uh, one can find the end effector position for each instant of time. Whatever we have done here, it is the Cartesian trajectory because it is giving the end effector position as a function of time. Now, if you solve the inverse kinematic solution uh, for uh, each and every instant of time, we will get theta 1 and theta 2 as a function of time d 3 and theta 4 by solving inverse kinematics. So, this is called the joint trajectory. For any type of robot manipulator, we can calculate the Cartesian trajectory or the joint trajectory by using the number of conditions 
if there are n conditions given initial and final conditions then we can get uh, we can fit a polynomial of degree n minus 1 uh, for the Cartesian trajectory and then solving the inverse kinematic solution we will get the joint trajectory of the manipulator. Okay, thank you.